This one is as a result of this memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance at that time, Mr. Kenneth Kuntun Kununku of Uriata, to ask cabinet to ag agree It didn't recognize that we were supporting financial development, economic development in Ghana. Didn't recognize all of those things. It just said, these people, they are causing us problems. They, and therefore, uh, it might affect our political chances. So let's shut it down. All right. Abusia, Yamamunina Kwaba, Ediba Lavez TV, Africa. Mama dia se obe subscribe to the channel na me. Nia Dr. Papa Kosi Indum e dey be tumu na no den. We yi document ni adiade. To back his argument. Na say you won say Dr. Papa Kosi Indum after a very long time. Ah GM Bank. Ye revoke key on license. Well, baba bon tin o koto visiting the various centers and now who pretty in the financial institutions no i'm saying we call most of most parts of the country now on facebook live the press conference or yeah to address certain issues you know was it as at that time before some very vocal in the line since you know the then finance minister Furiata wrote to cabinet say ye revoking the license Emma cabinet and GM too. Now was I make allegations at those time a banum and crawford no cause of fear and panic Emma panic withdrawal a hit in the bank no right so without wasting much time let's watch the video what Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum said during his Facebook live today. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for us. This is Lovers TV Africa and of course K Lover Media. Please subscribe. It was working until why did they why did they then knowing that the the the, the state that these agencies owed us why did they harass us like this? Why did they go and, and spread all sorts of things for customers to rush on us, to rush on us, to, to demand their funds? Which financial institution can survive a rush on them? Which one? Data Bank? No. Fidelity? No. GCB? No. Nobody. No one. And instead of solving the problems, Today, you will hear a minister of so-and-so and so-and-so saying, ah, some banks are going to collapse. You will hear um, the, 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 the vice president. He said some of it. You, you'll hear people from the central bank saying, ah, if you, if you, if you, if you can't uh, bring money, then your, your bank will go away. Why? A bank that they, they themselves knew and still know today was owed by government and these agencies if a debt to government is not good, what debt is good in, in Ghana? Why, why, why do people look for sovereign guarantee when they are giving us monies or when they are coming to do projects in Ghana? It's because everybody believes that you give money to government, it, it, it must come back. And, and let nobody also think that we give all of our monies uh, for government contracts. You know, when all this crisis came, we paid more than 600 million Ghana cities back to customers. And when it got hot, we even did butter because we produced televisions in Ghana. Some people, we give them televisions. We build houses in Ghana. Some people, we give, we give them houses. Um, <laughs> we, we, we build refrigerators. We give people refrigerators in exchange for their money. So let nobody come and say, we took their money and 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 we put all of it uh, to to government contractors no but the biggest chunk 
went to where it is safe is to them. So the money is not in my pocket. It's not here. It's not there. The money is with them. So let them pay the money. They pay the money. We are all fine. Finally, I'll just show you one thing here. This is dated July 26th, 2018. As I said, I have many of these documents, and they are not just in Ghana. They are, we have put them everywhere. There are many more. There are many more. This one, this one is as a result of this memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance at that time. Mr. Kenneth Kuntun Kununku of Oriata to ask cabinet to ag agree for GN Bank to be collapsed for its license to be taken. I have read this memorandum. This memorandum doesn't consider that it was the biggest bank with the widest distribution network in Ghana. He didn't consider that we were providing monies that was uh, banking services that was was increasing financial inclu inclusion in Ghana. It didn't recognize that we were supporting financial development, economic development in Ghana. Didn't recognize all of those things. It just said these people, they are causing us problems they, and therefore uh, it might affect our political chances. So let's shut it down. What led to the liquidity crisis? He refused to pay us. He paid all this. He refused to pay our contractors. And they thought that maybe if they paid the money, the money would come to me. And I've been telling people everywhere, that money, it doesn't belong to me. Oh. It belongs to customers. I've even said before, in writing to Jubilee House, that if you don't want to pay me, let's sit down and agree who is owed and pay them directly. Pay them directly. What is left, you give to us. Why wouldn't they mind us? Why would they even don't want to talk to me? Why? Why? And this thing, look, after Mr. Oforiata sent his memorandum to cabinet, you know, that according to what I'm holding here, cabinet did not agree that they should collapse GN Bank. Let me read to you what cabinet said. It says cabinet at this 36th meeting held on Thursday, 19th July, 2018, considered a report of the Cabinet Committee on Economic Matters on the above memorandum submitted by the Minister for Finance. The memorandum requ requested Cabinet to consider and approve the revocation of the license of GN Bank as it was found to be in distress and unable to meet the new minimum capital requirement. However, cabinet resolved that the Minister of Finance and Bank of Ghana should continue to engage the shareholders and management of the bank on the way forward so as to ensure confidence in the ongoing banking sector reforms in the country. I would be grateful if you could take action on the decision by cabinet. And this was sent to the Honorable Minister for Finance and to the governor of the Bank of Ghana from cabinet. So what happened? Who decided not to comply with the decision made by cabinet? Who? And then when we were in the difficulties, I sat down personally, the governor, the Bank of Ghana, and he said, ah, Bakwezi, look, save us all some grief. Why don't you accept to apply for um, a reclassification to become a savings and loans company. So we solve the minimum capital issue. And then we'll work to see if you can get your monies back from government agencies. When that is done, then you can come back and get your universal license back. Why did I believe him? Because the governor was and still is a member of the board of directors for Coco Board, one of the people that, that owe us for, for, for pre-financing Coco Roads in Ghana. So we did it. And in January 2019, they, they gave us um, a, a, a new license as a savings and loans company. 
So why is it that um, the <laughs> we didn't even finish the six months that they gave us to 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 transform ourselves to savings and loan? Then one day, all of a sudden, license revoked. What happened? What happened? Hmm? What happened? So um, let me stop there. Let me stop there. And if you have a question that you want to ask, please put it on 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 this, and I will I will um, I will answer your question for you. And you know what what I have been saying to people. You know when you have worked, I haven't taken anybody's money. I started the, these businesses with my own savings from working from 1975 in the United States. I've continued to be here. Some people even walk around saying, ah, he took monies from shareholders or, or from customers to America to buy a bank. Look, we started uh, the process of acquiring a bank in Chicago in 2014. And 2015, you know, it, we, 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 we paid our money. And then in 2016, uh, we started way before a new administration even came. And nobody, none of our customers had any issues in Ghana. And I have been working as a partner with, with, with US-based Deloitte & Touche. Nobody's money is in my pocket. Nobody's money is in my pocket. So, um, Somebody is asking the question: Will you come back, or stand in in um, in, in in politics for president, gentlemen? Look, right now, where I am, I'm 71 years old. I I I, I see what is going on in Ghana, and for me, my biggest issue is the investments that have been made, huge investments that. I want them back. That's why I've started this campaign. This is an economic campaign. It's a jobs, jobs, jobs campaign. So that's what I'm campaigning for. Definitely, I want someone to come become president who will see that what we're doing is valuable. Valuable and support us. Just as America supports its small banks, um, supports its small banks, and, and does all sorts of things in, in communities that are distressed. So they can see economic development, see what America is like. Okay. So no, I'm not contesting uh, any position in this this year's election. What I'm contesting is to be able to get our money back, so that we we can we can get the jobs back. That will for me will be a greatest accomplishment. Is to give thousands of Ghanaians their jobs back, their jobs back. What did they do to anybody for someone to make them poor, destitute, and can't get the valuable jobs that they had back? Me, I don't have a problem. I've retired in the US, I've retired in Ghana. I get some small, small money every month. I can survive. I don't need anybody's money. But as I tell people all over the country, when God has given you, you know, something good, Yours is not to go and sleep somewhere and say, I've got mine. Everybody can should fend for themselves. Not everybody can fend for themselves. So mine is to help somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's grandson, grandchild, somebody's husband or wife to also get theirs.